Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, Hurricane Track here, Thursday now, the 28th of August, 2025. Thank you very much for tuning in to today's update. Got a lot to discuss with you. We will end with a look back at Hurricane Katrina. Of course, the 20-year anniversary is upon us. A very important event for a lot of reasons, so we'll get to that at the end of today's update. Before then, though, watching this area off the coast of Africa, not just yet, but it is coming, so we'll look at all of that and more in between those bookmarks there of the beginning and the end of today's update. Quite a bit to show you. So let's get started, shall we? First, I do this often, go to the Hurricane Center homepage. After all, this is where it all starts, right? Now remember, we do have these seven-day outlooks from the National Hurricane Center as of the last couple years, whatever. Not just two to three or four days, but out to seven days and the fine folks down there using sophisticated computer technology are seeing out into the future better than ever before and that allows us to have this foresight that something tropical wave a piece of energy is going to come off and give us this 20 percent chance as of now of development nothing to worry about too much we'll certainly monitor it for our friends in the Cabo Verde Islands after all they have had, had impacts this year already from just an incipient uh, you know, uh, the beginnings of a system, right? So it does matter even that far east. Other people on top of it as well, Matt Devitt mentioning it. Uh, he's down in southwest Florida in the Fort Myers area. So not just other people like Matt up here, but other models. Look at that, Google. Like, I thought Google was for Google Ads and navigating somewhere. Nope. There's all kinds of models now. When I started this job, this career, Way back in the mid-90s, we didn't have this many models, that is for sure. So the big conglomeration of the Euro, the GFS, the Google stuff, the whatever, I mean, all kinds of models, it's picking up. The whole group of them, they are picking up on something trying to develop over the coming days. And we're going to have to watch and see what happens really, really early in the overall process. That's kind of the problem here, is we can see things so far out in time that... We get hung up on, well, it's going to be many days out and the different nuances of this run. It sends it way out to the Atlantic. This run, it takes it over to Houston or whatever. It's just early. And, you know, we have all this stuff. Maybe we shouldn't be looking at it this early, but here it is. And we just want to make sure people are aware. All right? After all, like I said, it's September coming up anyway. And we've got to be on top of this stuff because it's quiet now. This is what Ben is alluding to in this post nice and quiet right now the lull is here so use this time to prepare because it doesn't look like it's going to last and Ben also using sophisticated computer technology to generate these maps this is the current lull that he mentions sinking air generally over Africa and the Atlantic Basin not very favorable your forcing is just not there but as we move through the next few weeks especially mid to late September Boy, oh boy, from Africa all the way across into the Western Atlantic Basin, things look like they could become very active with the focus of the most pronounced upward motion in the Western part of the Atlantic Basin. So good advice here from our friend Ben. Use this quiet to do whatever it takes for you. For you, it's all up to you, right? You have the power here to do what you can, you know, review your plans, talk to your insurance agent. If you don't have rental insurance, something like that, you know, go get whatever supplies you can. It's different for everybody. Do it now while the stress is virtually zero from the weather department because our lives are already stressful and noisy and busy enough. It's very, very true. When these people say that, they care. They do, right? I do. I know Ben does. Use the time where it's quiet. To get ready because it's not going to last all right now we don't know the future for sure where stuff's going to end up we got what we know versus what we don't know and right now it is nice and quiet nice front coming down another one another shot of cooler drier air i'm going to admit it's kind of nice i don't sweat it out too much in the garage when i'm working on stuff uh, so that's good but i like the hot humid weather that's just me check this out piece of energy here headed towards trinidad and tobago and uh, the northeast part of South America, squashed intertropical convergent zone down here due to a pretty strong area of high pressure just kind of bullying its way in, uh, a plume of dust coming off of northwest Africa. I wonder if that looks like 
like if you're sitting out here on the beach and you see that coming, does it look like that big haboob that was in Phoenix the other day? Maybe. I don't know, but like that movie, The Mummy. Uh, that's all Hollywood, though. Uh, anyway, dusty out over the uh, eastern Atlantic, but that's going to change as the pattern starts to become more favorable. By the way, twins up here, twin cyclones, that is the remnants of Fernon, and this is just a non-tropical system, but they're both riding the jet stream up here, getting a free ride over to the North Atlantic and eventually maybe somewhere in the vicinity of Iceland or the British Isles, you never know. A lot of the tropical energy does end up over in parts of Northwest Europe and other locales uh, through the jet stream. Funny how that works, right? All right, so this is going to be very, very important going forward. We look at it often, that is for sure. But now that we are in the peak time of hurricane season, the end of August here, getting into September, and with the knowledge that we should be seeing a much more active upward motion pulse, the stuff I showed you from Ben Knoll, this starts to become critical. It does. Then that is the anomaly chart. We'll use black here to delineate everything. Very, very interesting development in the tropical Pacific all across this map, from the coast of South America all the way out to the Dateline. Negative anomalies have shown up. We're basically in La Nina. It's just not declared as such through technicalities and all of that through Climate Prediction Center that's U.S.-based or the Bureau of Meteorology out of Australia. The weather oftentimes does not care about our calendars and whatnot. It really does look like a La Nina overall. And as we get into September, the rising motion that is forecast to set up, especially over the western part of the basin here, should coincide well with this reducing the wind shear and I think that we're going to have some issues. I mean, it just stands to reason. Logic would dictate you get a water temperature profile like that with enough rising motion and energy that's available, we're probably going to see some problems. And it makes sense because think about it, come back on here, the last several years, 2022 through now, we've not had much in August. You know, this year we had Aaron, of course, kind of breaking that precedent a little bit, but September has been very busy, especially the last part, these last few years, and even getting into October. So we have a long way to go uh, with a profile like this, a very warm Atlantic relative to average, and the subtropics have certainly cooled a lot uh, by way of Aaron and Fernon doing their things. My mouse just being goofy today. Um, yeah, we have to be, as I was saying earlier, the, the good advice there from Ben We've got to stay on top of this. These lessons we keep reviewing, you know, Katrina 20 years ago, Laura 5 years ago, Ida, you know, 2021. And we keep doing these you know, memories and remembrances. you got to apply these lessons and look at the past and say, all right, how did we get there? And sometimes the clues are staring us right in the face. So, I mean, it's quiet now, but, man, I really do think it's going to change and the computer models seem to be all over it. This is the GFS from this afternoon. Well, the morning run. It is the afternoon now. Uh, watch this area right here, my wild my mouse notwithstanding. It's like the Bluetooth part's just going wacky. Let's move the slider. Look at the energy that comes off. There it is. If you blink, you might miss it. I'll, I'll highlight it for you. It's right there. And that is out at about uh, four days, roughly. And watch what that does over the few days after. It consolidates and then it moves on out into the Atlantic, and then more energy comes after that. This date, September the 4th, getting into the early part of what Ben Knoll was talking about, the eventual overspreading of much more favorable conditions across this region. We will be getting there by the early part of September, and the models are starting to pick up on it. Uh, of course, that's why we're talking about it. That's why the Hurricane Center has their outlook. All right, so speaking of the past, the biggest one... I think we can all agree for overall impacts and just the legacy that it left is Katrina in the you know the modern era 20 years ago and I really appreciate I want to say this that Dr. Ryan Maui has been putting out this sort of live tweeting of history going back and analyzing everything day by day I really appreciate that and I find it really interesting too that he mentions let's see I want to highlight this in yellow this little sentence right here at the very end of his post, Katrina comparable to Camille of 1969, only larger. It is amazing that he said that because Mike Watkins, my partner, 
that was helping me set up all the equipment there the very first time anybody had ever done anything like that. That afternoon, almost 20 years to the hour, right now, we were in Waveland, Mississippi, Mr. Watkins and myself, and he said as we were coming out of the fire department after meeting with local officials about where to put these cameras, something to the effect of, just like he said here, just like Camille, like bigger and stronger than Camille, something like that. And, I mean, that is so exactly right. The large wind field of Katrina is why the surge was so bad. And remember, this was not just a New Orleans story. It was Mississippi, it was Alabama, and then Katrina moved inland and created a huge disaster from down trees and so forth. It wasn't just a coastal. I mean, look, the track, even the uh, three-day forecast back then took it all the way up into Ohio. So it is appropriate to talk about these things and to see, hopefully, what we've learned. Lots of different interviews and shows and podcasts about it. But I really appreciate Dr. Maui posting these uh, out there for us to see in real time as it's happening, basically, 20 years later. Now, I'll end with this. Tonight, I really hope there's not a lot. You know, I'm not good at promoting myself. I try to just hold back a little bit. And just let people stumble across, you know, and if they like it, they like it. Tonight, though, I'm going to push it hard. I want you to tune in if you're home, because we're going to get together again. Myself, Mike Watkins, Jesse Bass, and Jim Williams. Who are those people? They were the beginning crew that helped make all of this possible, a part of it. There's actually more people, but we can't have everybody. It'd be a very crowded uh, show, podcast, whatever. Tonight at 8 p.m., the four of us are going to get down on the Zoom there, and we're going to go back 20 years at how all of this began. The very first time that anybody would ever set up these remote cams and stream from a hurricane. That was Katrina back in 2005. We did it in southeast Florida first, and then eventually ended up over in Mississippi, and we're going to go back over all the little details. I'll show some never-before-seen video as well few pictures thrown in and we will go until everybody says they got to go to bed all right so that's 8 p.m tonight on our youtube channel most of you watch on youtube youtube.com slash hurricane track and if you can't stay up you don't want to watch tonight whatever that's fine of course it'll be on youtube forever and always afterwards all right but 8 p.m eastern time tonight if you can tune in i think that you will really appreciate it and enjoy it how all of this began by the way, nice little AI enhanced image. That's a real picture of one of the boxes on a real poll that I asked ChatGPT to sort of stylize for me. And it did a pretty good job, I think. It got the point across. Anyway, let's sign off and get this online for you nice folks. And then I'll see you again tonight in about six hours. About six hours from now, seven hours, whatever. I'll be preparing and get everything ready for our look back and how it all began 20 years ago with epic and legendary Hurricane Katrina. All right? Have a good rest of your Thursday. As always, thanks for giving me some time and attention. I do appreciate it, and I always hope you learn something. From all of us at Hurricane Track, I'm Mark Suddoth, and I'll see you later today or this evening on the YouTube Live event.